My coverage of CES 2018 from Las Vegas, Nevada is brought to you by Cooler Master, Enermax, OCZ Toshiba, and Deepcool. Welcome to my next CES 2018 video, guys. I have made my way over to Zotac. They're in this big roundish suite here at Caesars Palace, so it's actually a really cool room. I've heard they're going to have a party here tomorrow. Anyway, uh, they have some new mini PCs. They're really good at those. They've got some external enclosures. They have a very mysterious, very mysterious project down there that they've told me very limited things about, but I'll share it with you nonetheless. And they have a couple really cool uh, custom-built PCs I wanted to share with you as well. So uh, let's take a look. Mini PCs. All right, this is the Zotac VR Go. I showed you guys this over at Computex. It's a VR backpack, so computer you wear on your backs for VR. They've updated this uh, by making the Zotac logo light up, which everyone was asking for. And they've also got uh, a slightly updated version. Uh, this one's got a GTX 1070 in it, and the one upstairs actually has a GTX 1080 in it. So uh, you, can, you can put a computer on your back. So these mini PCs up here uh, are actually workstations. And this is kind of a new thing that Zotac's doing. Uh, for anyone who's interested in workstation, if you're doing video editing or anything that requires a lot of heavy lifting, they got the 5,000, the 1,000, and the 3,000 here. They're working on these designs. They're uh, still in development, but from what Boo told me, they're mostly aiming to make it look kind of like this one right here, which has uh, a nice finish, some ventilation along the sides. Of course, ports up front, party in the back. Uh, and they, they're going to feature Quadro, full-size NVIDIA Quadro cards, Quadro P3000, P1000, and P5000, which goes along with the name. Now, of course, we've got the Magnus series. They've been working on this for a while. There's some other variants of that with different components in them and higher end for gaming and that kind of thing. I wanted to show you guys this one really quick. This is the CI660 Nano, uh, which is fairly small, and it's actually an external box design that they are sort of developing, and they wanted to get a little bit of feedback on. So there it is. It's got a white sort of front going around the front of the front right there. It's got a couple USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, which I thought was pretty cool to have on the front of a system like this. Tons of ventilation all around. Uh, it is a plastic frame, but uh, does seem fairly sturdy. And then you got all your I.O. at the back with another white accent panel. So guys, let us know in the comments down below uh, what you think of this little mini PC design. If you guys are looking for something that you can maybe uh, drop into your living room for an HTPC or something like that, uh, let us know if you'd be interested. Again, that's a CI660 Nano. And, uh, this one in particular features an i7-8550U processor, uh, DDR4, a 2.5 inch hard drive bay, and again, two of those USB 3.1 ports. All right, and real quickly, I wanted to show you these really tiny ones down at the end. This one has been out. This is the previous smallest mini PC that Zotac made, which is the Pico PI336. This has an Intel N4100 quad core in it, as well as four gigs of memory and uh, 32 gigabytes of storage. But look at this one here. This is the Pico PI226. It has a new Gemini Lake based processor from Intel. So it is a Celeron processor, dual core at 1.1 gigahertz, the Intel N4000. 4 gigs of memory, 32 gigabytes of eMMC onboard storage, and a couple USB 3.0 ports, which are uh, right over on that side. So you would use those to connect up external uh, signage, for example, or monitors. Over on this side, it's got a micro, a USB micro port that's used for power. And then I believe there's a micro SD card slot those there so you can add some expanded storage. Now you're probably not gonna be able to do much gaming on this or anything like that because it is very small. So you're, you know, it's not exactly got crazy graphics prowess. But what they have set up to do back here is uh, for digital signage. So that larger one that they have set up is connecting up a couple of these displays. And then this display on the top right is running just off of one of these little devices. Uh, so if you have a sign in a restaurant, something like that, need something low power, passively cooled and very, very small and portable, check out the Pico PI-226. Finally, we have this little VR setup that Zotac has put together uh, just with an Oculus Rift, and they're basically trying to show off the newest version of the Magnus with an Intel 8th Gen Core processor. So this actually has an 8700 in it, which means it's got six cores and 12 threads. It's also got a GTX 1080 Mini in there, uh, with eight gigs of uh, video memory. It's also got two DDR4 sticks uh, going up to 2666 speed and Optane memory slot as well. So if you want to accelerate a old uh, mechanical hard drive or something like that, that's a great solution to use Optane for. I'm not a huge fan of Optane myself, but it is, it is available, so I thought I'd point it out. Uh, there's a quick rundown of the rest of the specs. This is not available yet. They are still finalizing this design, but uh, it does support up to four individual displays, and again, does support VR. So uh, we're looking for a launch 
of the Magnus with 8th gen Intel core processor in Q2 of 2018. Over here is the Zotac gaming area, and Zotac's actually working on some, some peripherals, like uh, these are these are little Bluetooth controllers that they're working on. Um, this is, these are just concept products. They're not sure whether or not they're actually going to bring them to market, but um, if there's interest, you can. So a little controller connected up to Bluetooth via an Android to an Android device via Bluetooth, and uh, get your game on. Now over here on the left is actually a product that launched in December. This is the Mech One gaming system. So a full-size desktop chassis, although it is a very slim, a very slim and svelte sort of design that they have going on there. It, like it, 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 it kind of pinches in in the middle. Like that's its waist right there. Um, but it does have plenty of ventilation. They've got some slots going on on the side to allow airflow and that kind of thing. And these are actually going to be selling as full systems. Uh, the one on the left over here, which launched in December, has a 7700, so seventh gen Intel Core processor, uh, and a GTX 1070. Now this one over on the right is coming soon. And this one's going to have an 8th gen Intel Coffee Lake processor as well as a GTX 1080. Now they are going to ship with a Windows license and it's also going to ship with these peripherals. So you're going to get an optical gaming mouse and you're also going to get this keyboard which has uh, blue switches. They are generic blue switches. They won't tell me what brand specifically they are, but they are mechanical and it has a very clicky mechanical feel. Uh, now this is going to work with the Spectra software. So you can use that in order to control the lighting that's going around the accent edges of the Mech 1 gaming chassis itself. And then it's going to ship with, uh, of course, the processor and graphics card we already mentioned, as well as the 240 gig NVMe SSD. Over here we have external docks. So, for example, down here is a small Zotac external dock. This one's got a 180 watt power supply in it, so it's uh, going to support uh, graphics cards in the range of like a GTX 1060. Um, but it is connected via Thunderbolt 3, so you just need a laptop or a small PC. They've got one of their nano PCs right here. Normally this PC would not be capable of gaming, but hook it up to an external graphics card via Lightning, or I'm sorry, via Thunderbolt 3, and there you go. Suddenly you have a gaming system. Here's another one. This one's just called External Thunderbolt 3 Box because it's still in development, but uh, this one's basically made to support full-size up to 12-inch graphics cards. It also includes a 550-watt power supply, so that's enough juice not only to power the graphics card itself, but if you have a Thunderbolt 3 connection to your laptop, for example, you can actually, when you connect your laptop to this uh, external GPU dock, charge your laptop at the same time. It's got uh, that single Thunderbolt 3 port and a couple USB 3.0 ports as well as that uh, by 16 PCIe slot for your graphics card. And finally we have the AMP box and this one's probably going to be the most interesting to any of you guys uh, out there who are watching my channel because this one does have enough juice, 450 watts, to support a uh, high-end graphics card. So anything up to a GTX 1080 Ti, it will work with right now, as long as it's not too long. Uh, they've got a Zotac Mini in there right now, so bear in mind you are limited to 9-inch graphics cards, but that does include a pretty wide range. Uh, it's got a PCIe 16 by 16 slot in there. It's got uh, RGB lighting integrated that you can also use and control with that Spectra software that I showed you just a moment ago. And this one can also provide an additional 100 watts of power at 20 volts uh, out. So you can use this one to charge an external laptop as well. Now up here we have uh, kind of a unique product, something that I'm not really sure if I've seen before. And Zotac is not giving very many details on this one because they're working with several hardware partners on it. And they won't tell me who that uh, they, they are. And this might not even be a Zotac product when it comes out. But basically what you have here is a 38 inch curved ultra-wide display. Uh, it's a 3840 by 1600, so it is 21 by 9 resolution, or, or aspect ratio, uh, and fairly high resolution. It can display 4K, although it will, be, uh, it will be scaled down just a little bit since you don't have quite the vertical 4K resolution. Uh, but it's an all-in-one computer, not just a display. So it's got everything that you need to run the computer actually built in and in integrated into the back. It's also got a couple video inputs. So for example, they have an Xbox connected up to it right now, and they just have a split screen going on with Forza going on on one side, and then the integrated computer displaying on the left side. So you got split screen options, and um, from what I understand, the system it's running on in the back there has a CPU with the graphics built into it, that's all I can tell you. So I got to leave it mysterious beyond that. Who knows if and when this product will come out, but uh, I like all-in-ones when they are done well. Zotac does a pretty good job with them. And pairing up a high-end 
CPU plus GPU combination with this kind of display, I think, uh, would be a good option. So keep an eye out for this product whenever, if and when it does launch. And guys, as I've done in the past, I'm going to finish by showing you guys a couple custom builds that Zotac has on display right here. Over my right shoulder is a build by BS Mods. It's got a GTX 1080 Ti Arctic Storm Mini in it. A Corsair Crystal Series 570X uh, mid-tower case. Uh, EK water cooling components, a 7740X processor. Cringe. I'm cringing at that a little bit. Uh, four by eight gigs of uh, memory and an X299 motherboard. And then finally here, over my right shoulder once again, is a build by Ron Lee Christensen. Uh, this one has a GTX 1080 Mini as well. It's got a Destiny 2 theme, if uh, that's not evidence. Uh, Fractal Celsius S24 cooler, an i5-6600K processor, HyperX memory, and a Cooler Master V750 cooler. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for my coverage here at the Zotac Suites in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. And of course, a big final thank you to my sponsors, OCZ Toshiba, Enermax, Deep Cool, and Cooler Master. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.